With time on our hands before our second COVID jab, we set sail for the Aeolian Islands. The forecast was 20 to 25 knots, which for Cordelia makes for a great sail. Little did we know. Bags are packed, are you ready to go? This time tomorrow we'll be on the road. We are Steve and Annette, a semi-retired couple who sold up everything to fulfil our dream of sailing the world, or as far as we can get. We spent 10 years planning to start our dream. In the end, you only ever regret the chances you didn't take. Second of May. This is our stretchy bungee. So if we get a fish, it can't. Well, we don't think it'll get away. <laughs> if we get a fish. I was reluctant to have Steve help me because he refuses to have anything to do with fish until it's on his plate. He won't touch it, kill it, gut it, descale it, fillet it, he just eats it. So this is oh, my on. catch, not I his. Not noise, yeah. <laughs> come on, I'm supposed to be navigating. <laughs> We got a new lucky lure. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I 
I know to some of you this is not a huge catch, but we've sailed over 3,000 miles and have only caught two fish so far, so this is massive to us. We're just going through the Messina Straits, or come up the Messina Straits. This is the narrowest bit. That's Pura Vida. It doesn't look like it, but we were now sustaining long gusts of 50 knots. Our friends behind us on Pura Vida had decided to put their mainsail down just before they came through the Messina Strait, and Safari in front of us had lost their code zero over the side, but had managed to lift it back on board. When it was finally over, four hours later, we had all decided to take refuge in Milazzo. I'm only doing this because it's not funny, I know. But we've gone from being in shorts and t-shirts and laughing our heads off catching a tuna off the back of the boat. To now blowing a gale. Yeah. Life jackets on. Wet weather gear on. While Cordelia was designed and built to react well in strong winds, we had made the rookie mistake of not reefing our mainsail before coming through the Messina Strait. The gusts were so strong that it was vibrating down through the mast. Steve needed to reef the main to save the sail. Once things had calmed down a bit, our only damage was two broken sail slides, so reefing that main had saved our sail completely. With the weather very much more settled, motoring into Milazzo, Steve set about trying to release the mizzen halyard. This was something that he hadn't put away properly, or tied off properly. It had wrapped itself around our radar 25 foot up the mizzen mast. So we're still trying to uh, sort out the mizzen mast shackle. Oh, I think that's going to be too heavy. I think you've got to get, you've got to get wind your neck in. Can you <laughs> what? pull on the release the clutch on the other side of the pull. Right, let's just let me explain because obviously there's a, there's a failure to communicate here. What I'm looking to do is not get it off. What I'm looking to do... I know, is get it is over get that shroud. No, I'm looking to get the halyard, this, over the spreader and back down to me. I know. But why is there a failure to communicate? What did, what did you think I thought that you were going to well, do with I've that bottle? I have no idea because you were coming out with complete dribble. I thought you were going to throw the bottle up. <laughs> Can't educate Paul. Come on. <laughs> See, if I'm not being funny, but that ain't going to do anything, is it? It's not heavy enough. It's not heavy enough? No, look. It's not. It's not pulling itself down. Why does it need to pull itself down then? What do you think the water's up there for? Just a holiday? 
<laughs> Stop it. I've got a big bottle of water, obviously. So put it back down again. I'll go and get the big bottle of water. Let's take four. The fourth idea. nowhere near it but what a because <laughs> it's gonna hit and explode isn't it no well it didn't then because it hit the beam back <laughs> oh, come on let's have this let's do this <laughs> if it goes in the water what <laughs> Would you heavy. like me to throw it? It's too heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Would I like you the gold medal award winning thrower? I was at Oakfield. Oh, at Oakfield. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> at Oakfield, I won an award. That's because they gave everybody an award. <laughs> no, even, they never used to in no, those days. There was a, the they were proper sports <laughs> days in those days. <laughs> no, no. You yes, they not, were. You would not have won. I need to go. I need to have a go. Don't untie it. I need to have a go. Somehow, and I really don't know how, Annette managed to throw that ball and get it over that spreader. She's always told me that she was a champion thrower at Oakfield School. This is when she was six and she won an award. And I've always said it was um, <laughs> a bit of BS. And, and it's become like a kind of urban myth in our family that she was a champion thrower. But um, I was at the front of the boat with my head in my hands trying to think of the next big plan. And um, somehow she managed to fluke it and get it exactly where we needed it to be. So now we're gonna try and um, get the halyard unwrapped from around the front of the radar reflector. Up there. Just leaving Milazzo. We spent the night here last night because we were supposed to be going to Volcana but on the way round and up through the Messina streets we hit some freaky bad weather. Unexpected. Um, 50 knot winds, full sail up, full main sail up. Absolute, absolute nightmare it was. Um, we had about seven hours of it. So we decided to pop into Malazzo and spend the night here rather than continue over to Volcano. It's half two in the afternoon. It's been an absolute scorcher of a day so far. And I sorted out the mizzen halyard. And um, yeah, it's just a bit of a shame that Gus didn't get, uh, didn't get to go on shore, but he'll have a long time on shore tomorrow. We learned a lot on this trip, being the first bad weather sail that we had with Gus. We hadn't prepared properly, with portholes and hatches open, and nowhere safely to put Gus so he wasn't too anxious. Watch out for our next episode, where we take you with us to the Aeolian Islands, and what a treat that is. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment and like. We love to hear from you. Ciao for now.